Evening again. Hope your Monday went well. After such a beautiful Sunday, it seems to me we got a very Monday-ish kind of Monday. Not really bad, but kind of gray and lackluster. You know, Monday. But this is Holy Week and we're pressing towards Good Friday, which I've maintained is the holiest day of the year. Your sins and mine were dealt with on Good Friday. We might celebrate Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. We should, in fact, celebrate his resurrection on Easter Sunday. But our sins were atoned for, and we got our peace with God on Good Friday at the end of Jesus' suffering for us when he said it is finished. That's not a very comfortable thought. But our sin isn't a very comfortable subject either. It's bad. Worse than a diagnosis with the present plague. Worse than a diagnosis with some horrible wasting disease, sin has brought death and misery and brings its poison to all eternity into our hearts and souls. And if we're willing to call doctors and nurses heroes, and they are, because they go and stand in the gap and are working for the sick, even though it puts them at risk and they experience nightmarish situations as people are sick and they see them, and people die and they see them. Well, think about Jesus. What kind of hero is he? Is it appropriate to call him a hero? I'd say absolutely, a hero and more. We're used to heroes doing exciting things, facing down anger and facing down danger, fighting the villain and winning. We don't often like the idea of heroes who sacrifice themselves totally because we like happy endings. Give me a hero who stood up to stiff odds and managed to escape gloriously at the end and laughed in a big happy ending. We see the hero. Well, Jesus faced the stiffest odds, no way of coming through that cross alive, no way of striking down his tormentors or bringing them down with that finishing punch. He won by being finished off and stricken himself. We see no glory there. Hopefully we see the beauty, but we see no glory there. The thing is, Jesus describes himself as the glorious, uh, or describes this rather, as the glorious thing he'd come to do. In contemplating his death, he said, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. John 12, 27. Rather than be troubled and rather be saved from it, no, he came to do this, and God's name was glorified, and we saw his glory, first and foremost, John tells us, in the cross. It is found in dying gloriously that we may live. It was the only way we could live. To our thinking, it's a backwards glory. It doesn't make good Hollywood, but it makes life. And that's where the life is. So think about your life and your need to be saved from your own sin. But more than that, think about what glory really means, especially when it's the glory of taking the heat for you. And think about the fact that it can only be glorious to a God who above all wanted to save all of us from certain hell. To a God who loved us and so saw glory in doing this. You're not alone and you're deeply loved, even through this time of being isolated and cut off from a lot of people. It's all I got on a Monday. God bless you on this holy Monday. Remember, no man is an island and you don't have to be either. So call, write, wave at someone in the park, draw closer together during this time of isolation. Shalom.